Batista, Marquise Bragg. Must do a job tonight, rebounding inside for the Friars. You must stay out of foul trouble as well. Here is Billy Owens, averaging over 21 points a game. It could be that Syracuse will have two 20-point scorers this year. They've never had any prior to this season. And Billy Owens, as we talked about, he's the takeover man for Syracuse. Tony Turner, the sophomore from College Park, Georgia, has shown flashes, Ronnie, of the ability to step up. Well, that's right. He had a great game against Georgetown here in the upset win for the Friars. He can shoot the three. Leron Ellis coming on strong after a rather slow start to the season. Been playing very well in his last 13 games. And Marvin Sadler, who played so well in that come-from-behind victory over UConn, will get the start tonight. One of the keys for Syracuse could be the guards, and this is a freshman, Adrian Autry. Well, they'll be seeing full court pressure from the Friars all night long, so Autry with the ball will certainly be key for the Orangemen. And Trent Forbes, number 20, is a key for Providence. He's going to run the offense and set up Eric Murdoch. Michael Edwards, early in the year, had a sprained ankle, has never really recovered from it, has not shot the ball very well, but Syracuse's guards will need to take care of the ball because of this man, Eric Murdoch. What a year Eric is having, 30-plus a game, coming off a 48-point Big East record game against Pittsburgh. Jim Beheim has never lost here in Providence, Rhode Island. Rick Barnes looking to take care of that tonight. The officiating crew for the ball game as we get set for the opening tip. Gene Manji will be the referee. Roger Paramore and Mickey Crowley are the other officials. We will have the start of the game after this word from your local station. Numbers, up-tempo numbers. This is a game that should play up in the 80s, potentially the 90s, the way both of these teams like to go at each other. Ellis controls the opening tip to Michael Edwards. The sophomore from Voorhees, New Jersey, will run the offense. Adrian Autry, they call him Red. Here's Billy Owens. He tries to go up and does to Ellis. He loves to do that to either Ellis or Johnson. Well, the alley-oop factor always one that the Orange men look for. They get it right away. Sadler out at the point. Turner's three. He rolls off the rim, and Owens has the rebound. That's another of his strengths, rebounding. Here is Billy. Out where he likes to be, where he can run things and handle the ball in the open court. Friars man-to-man -man early. He'll shoot a three. Won't go. Sadler in front of Ellis, the rebound. Back comes Trent Forbes. Edwards tries to cut him off. Forbes will push. Goes inside. Bragg reverses the score. Well, early in the game, Red Audrey matched up against Eric Murdoch. We'll have to get a better look at it to see if it's a special defense against Murdoch. Nice speed inside, though. Here comes Johnson. Picked up by Forbes. They swing it around the perimeter. Autry loves to penetrate. Goes low. Owens lays it in. Now, Billy Owens, wide open inside. Great penetration by the freshman, Adrian Autry. Man-to-man -man by Syracuse. They enter the ball to Sadler, and he goes back door to Bragg, who jams it. Now, there's a lot of attention being paid to Eric Murdoch early, and we're seeing a couple of Friars getting open underneath with some good passing. Owens has the numbers his way. Three on two. Johnson's jumper good. A fast start to this ball game. Both teams coming out with good offense. Some mistakes underneath with no defense, but some good passing. Syracuse attacking the Providence pressure that time. Bragg, no place to go along the baseline. Turner will try another three. This one also misses. And then he commits the foul. A frustration foul. Turner tried to get it back. He's missed a couple of three-pointers early in the ball game. Well, we see that. More often than not, when a player makes a mistake or doesn't get a shot to go, the recovery and the mistake. Rick Barnes gets the program rolled up tightly. 46 and 30 in his third season here at Providence after a 20 and 10 campaign at George Mason. Taking his team to the NCAAs a couple of times. Losing to Ohio State last year in overtime in the opening round. Autry gets it up to Edwards. He'll try three. It's short. Marquis Bragg has the rebound. Two for Marquise Forbes. The sap blocked by Ellis. So Ellis picks up the block. And is his 36th on the year. Owen keeps his dribble. Decides to shoot. It's a two. And the foul on the rebound coming over the back is 
Adrian Autry his first personal foul and the first team foul on the Orangemen. Well, the pace of this game is very quick. Providence clearly trying to get established in low early in this one, but Laron Ellis, who leads the team in rejection, did not leave his feet until he had to with perfect timing. We played two and a half minutes of the opening 20, and there is Bragg, who has scored all six of the prior points. Give Murdoch credit for the assist, and we are tied for the third time. And that's the first time out of the offense that Murdoch has touched the ball so far from Providence. He's been denied by Autry so far. The amazing thing about Erie is that he gets most of his points. There's a three by Autry that nestles in. Adrian Autry hitting his 19th three-pointer of the season. He does get most of his points out of the offense. Bragg tried to reverse it. It skipped past Turner and out of bounds, and we will quickly have Fred Campbell, one of three junior college transfers, seeing a lot of playing time for the Friars, replacing Turner. Good hustle by Trent Forbes. It was the lead pass to Bragg. Couldn't catch up with it, and Forbes, pretty good job. Dancing over the table. Is that the Syracuse radio announce area? And he spilled all of their drinks and took care of everything immediately. <laughs> Johnson along the baseline, up and hit. Pulled down by Sadler. Knocked away by Johnson. It's loose. Forbes stays with it. He's fouled by Ellis. Boy, you hate to see Lerone Ellis commit a foul back there. Well, that's right. Ellis just was there with Dave Johnson, thinking that he could capitalize. Good hustle. Ben Forbes just recovering. Look at Jimmy Beheim's numbers. All-time winning us to Syracuse now as he has hit the 360 total in his career. This is his 15th season. I mentioned this series definitely dominated by Syracuse tipped up and almost tipped in by Owen. They scramble along the baseline and crack again. Well, we said that a combination of players would have to step up for Providence tonight. Well, one of them could have been Marquise Bragg, and he's got eight already in this game. He has all eight. Right place, right time that time. Ellis' little jumper from the baseline is good. Back to the three-point lead. 15-56 remaining first half. Campbell, the first substitute for either team. Gets it back from Trent Forbes. They yeah. love to see Forbes step up and play well offensively. Oh yeah, and he's not afraid to handle the ball. Murdoch is being denied all over the court. There's Ellis again with the help out. Autry's only job, it seems defensively, is to deny him the ball. Forbes for three. That's a big confidence booster, and right away he pointed to Rick Barnes and said, take me out, I'm winded. The fourth tie of the game. Each team now has a three-pointer. Here comes Owens. Lost the ball as he turned to go to the baseline. It's a three-on-one. Murdoch, Campbell, blocked by Johnson. Now Bragg again, he's got ten points. Bragg has been huge in the early going, and Providence out off to the races that time. Really out hustling the orange bend to the ball. First time tonight that the Friars have had the lead. Johnson pulls up for the jumper. Off the front of the iron. Back comes Murdoch. He looks to Campbell, doesn't go. Pulls up for the three. And it's in. No, they called it a two. Now, now they change it to three. Syracuse so far has been content, John, to come up and try to take the three of the long-range jump shot. Better off if they can swing it and establish the inside game again, which seems to be there. Johnson tries to answer. Camp. Ellis had it. Now Sadler. Here's Murdoch with Campbell. Goes around Edwards, then finds Sadler. Oh, what a feed. Jimmy Beheim may want to talk it over. That's a great dish. Syracuse takes the timeout. A great run by Providence. They've scored nine in a row, and we'll be back. Time by Marvin Sadler. Murdoch is throwing a crowd defensively, and the passing lanes are there, and Providence is taking advantage. Bragg, opportunistic, right place, right time basket, but he has been all over this one so far. Perfect from the field, already at his average in Big East play. Here comes Autry, finds Ellis. We have the blocking foul underneath, first of all. Marquise Bragg with number one. That's a good sign for Syracuse out of the timeout. They've been seeing the Providence pressure. That time, they went on the attack with the penetration. 
14 minutes and three seconds remaining in the first half. Along with Ron Perry, I'm Mount Sanders. Ellis has it, comes back out. They'll reset in half court with Michael Edwards. McDonald picks him up. Now Autry, this is what he likes to do. Goes up and lays it in. Well, he's strong. He's 6'4", 195 pounds, and he can penetrate to the goal. Lead is five. Dickie Simpkins is into the ball game, replacing Sadler, Walworth well, Campbell, McDonald, Marquise Bragg, and of course Eric Murdoch. His jumper, good. Boy, he's got that feel, doesn't he? And that confidence. Everything looks good. Stopping on a dime there and pulling up. Providence in the one-two-two three-quarter court press, looking to trap. Owens touched the ball a lot early in the game for Syracuse, but not the last two or three times down. Now they find him. Beautiful feed. Second basket for Billy Owens. Worth a 13-minute mark. Time remaining in the opening half. Zone this time by Syracuse. Two three. Murdoch, that's an NBA three. Bending in. Oh -ho! Eight for Murdoch. The home court bounce. Played the iron perfectly, didn't he? The nice roll. Biggest lead of the first half. It's an eight-point edge for the Friars. Ellis, turnaround jumper in the lane, bending, bending off. Johnson was being ripped down as he up for the rebound. Was it Campbell had an arm, I think. Really locked him up. That is the first foul on Fred. Well, one of the areas that Syracuse is so tough. Offensive class, Eric Murdoch, NBA three. That ball hits the front eye and it just dies. Gets the nice roll. And when you're going good, you get those kind of bounces. Murdoch with one steal so far. So, Ronnie, he needs five more to become number one all time in the NCAA. Well, he's been noted for the defense up until this year. But when you're getting 33 a game, people start talking about your offense. Autry. Again, got into the lane, missed the jump shot. Back comes Murdoch. Well, we can talk about it as the game goes on. Murdoch generates a lot of his offense off of his defense. Good hustle by the Orange that time. McDonald almost tripped by Hopkins, who's in the lineup. They scramble. Owens with Johnson out in front, goes behind his back, and Murdoch, with help from McDonald, knocks it away. And the Friars will get it back. Well, both teams pounding it on the... Hardwood a little bit too much. Look for Syracuse to trap. They're really ready to run out out of the 2-3. Very active. The foul is on Hopkins. Mike picks up his first. Hopkins played well and he went over Georgetown last Monday. That was a two-point victory. Those two points are all that separates Syracuse from all of its Big East opponents in points scored this season. Well, that's, that's a good sign for Syracuse. They've been finding ways to win. And a couple of overtime games that they have won at home. McDonald tied up a bit, finds Turner. Tipkins right at the foul line, decides not to shoot. Murdoch will as he hangs, rolls out. Sadler underneath for the follow, and he's fouled on the way up. And again, I think it's going to be Hopkins picking up a second quick foul. Again, Murdoch draws two or three orange men defenders, and that leaves a couple of openings for the prior front line to get in for the offensive rebound. Watts into the lineup. The senior replaces McDonald. The junior college players are McDonald, Corey Floyd, whom we haven't seen yet, and Fred Campbell, who has been in the ballgame. McDonald is a very good outside shooter. He ran into a real dry spell and lost the pit on Wednesday. Just couldn't buy one. Sometimes happens to shooters. And, and for a shooter, if you can get your first one or two to go down, John, in a game, that can build the confidence and get you on a good streak. First foul shot we've had by either team tonight. And Sadler hits a pair. A total of four for him. 11.40 to play. The lead for Providence is 10. Back after this from your local station. Man of steel chases Robertson and Anderson, and he'll get them. It's just a matter of time. That is some kind of performance for Eric Murdoch. Always active defensively. Combining the big time offense with the defense this year. Full court pressure again by the Friars. When you get the pressure, you're going to see Billy Owens part of bringing the ball up. He got the size of 6'9, and he can handle the ball. Part of his all purpose game. Friars man to man. See if Syracuse can take advantage inside. Owens picked up now by Sadler. 
Sadler can match up down low, but not necessarily for the jumper. The turnaround is good, exactly as you predicted. The turnaround jumper, six points for Owen. And they begin to slice into that 10-point lead. Now, Billy is so tough to match up against, and that's why with his versatility, people try strong guys against him and quicker guys, and he takes advantage. Keep in mind that the Orange men have not shot 50% in a Big East game this season. The Friars will keep it. Greg Burke, SID for Providence, with a good hands on that. I, I, I might admit I got a hand on it, John. I think, he, cool. I think he gets credit for a steal, though, doesn't he, Ronnie? Because he took it away from him. We'll give him a steal. Marquise Bragg with 10 early points is back on the court along with Forbes. Watts will sit down. Dickie Simpkins also out of the lineup and McCray on for the first time tonight as Johnson gets a rest. Conrad McCray, he could send a couple back inside. A great shot blocker. A favorite of the Orangemen. The way he does that, too, he can really lift the team, and that's what you want a guy to do off the bench for you. Murdoch hands it off to Trent Ford. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Shot clock is down to five. Right. With one second on the shot clock. I tell you, Marquise, he's feeling it tonight. He's ready. That was a, a dozen catch. for Bragg. Here's Owens against Bragg, and Marquise will pick up his second personal foul. The one thing he doesn't want to do when he's got a game like he's got going tonight, and that's to get into foul trouble, and Billy Owens can always draw people into foul. Look at that catch by Bragg, and the beautiful spin move with just a second to go on the shot clock. That's a big-time move inside. Billy Owens at the foul line had some problems in that category at the cap center last Monday. Missed his last four foul shots and his last four field goal attempts. But the orange finally put it away. A two-point win. There have been a lot of those low-scoring games in the Big East. It's almost like the coaches are playing half court and playing not to lose. That was an attack. Well, this game has more the feel of the up-tempo, the way the teams are going at each other. Rattled home by Troy Brown. Brown on the court for the first time in the ball game, and it's back to a 10-point Providence lead. Troy Brown, a freshman with a lot of promise, a lot of tools for Providence. Here's another freshman, McCorkle's jumper. Yes. It goes. So Scott McCorkle into the ball game hits. Both teams now look to the bench looking for a spark. Murdoch gets another three. That's his third of the game. 11 points for Electric Eric. Well, he's got the stroke going tonight. And McCorkle hit last time for Syracuse. He had a dozen against Connecticut at home a few days ago. Owens takes it to the baseline, goes up, and puts one more foul in the column of Marquise Bragg. That's three already, so Marquise is going to have to take it easy. going to have to take it easy on the bench with three. And you hate to take him out. The spark he's been for the Friars so far. Big East, you get six fouls, but there's no way with this much time. Rick Barnes wants to see Bragg pick up number four. So Sadler will check in, and also Chris Watts. Turner sits down. Watts back in. He is the three-point shot. Most of his shots in his career have been three-pointers. Well, he's only attempted one, two in Big East play so far this year. That's an amazing number. Owens with nine in the game, the junior from Carlisle. Three for three at the line. Think about Billy, quietly gets those points. He doesn't force it, gets it out of the offensive team. Billy Owens joins Marquise Bragg and Eric Murdoch in double figures. He has ten. Seen two great ones in this game with Owens and Murdoch. It is blocked in a foul call. Hopkins went up with him, and he will pick up his third foul. Well, we're seeing features of both of these guys' games, and Murdoch will really want the ball. He's always moving without it. And you can see Hopkins hung up behind the screen. And what I think Murdoch does very well is draw fouls, and we've seen Billy Owens do the same thing so far in this game. They both get themselves to the foul line. Hopkins out, Johnson in. Murdoch goes to the line, where all he does is shoot 85%. Plays about 40 minutes a game or so. <laughs> That's where you could change the man of steel, 
certainly S-T-E-E-L. He's a very durable, rugged player. Neither team has missed at the foul line so far, and Eric Murdoch, who is averaging 33 points a game in Big East play, has 13 here in the first half. Back to that 11-point lead, the biggest it has been in the first half. Owen, three, too hard. Murdoch finds Forbes on his way down. Forbes gets called for the foul right in front of his coach. Mickey Crowley made the call. Mickey working with this crew that includes Gene Manji and Roger Paramore. We had been given the indication it would be Peter Pavia, but it is not. It's Mickey. Mickey sold that call that time with the forearm push. Owens, long the baseline, jumper, no go. Johnson tipped it up. It goes back in his hands. He lost it. They still scramble right along the edge of the lane. There is Owens. Now right place, right time for Billy Owens. But one of the things Barnes feared, the offensive rebounding. Autry got a piece of that. It goes out of bounds, and the Friars will keep it with 8.28 to play in the half. Billy Owens now has 12. Bragg has 12. And the leading scorer is Eric Murdoch with 13. Ellis is back. Edwards is back. And Campbell is back for Providence. Also checking back in once again will be Dickie Simpkins. Troy Brown will leave, and Murdoch gets his first rest. So he's not going to play 40 minutes. He won't be down for long. Rick Barnes will get him back in quickly. Johnson takes it away from Sadler, who gets it back. Off the official and into Johnson's hands. He's hammered by Sadler. Well, wow, that's a fortunate bounce for Syracuse off of Roger Paramore's leg on the way out of bounds. It would have been Syracuse ball, though. Look at Johnson, the good anticipation. A scramble for the ball. That ball was heading out of bounds off Paramore's leg right back to Dave Johnson. No question about the foul on Sadler. Let's give Roger credit. He was trying to get out of the way. Roger wanted the assist on that one. Yeah, but Johnson couldn't finish in time. There you go. See the improvement in his numbers from six and a half last year. Early in his career, he did have a big game against Providence. He had an 18-point ball game. The one player for Syracuse that's played well, especially last year against Providence, was Billy Owens. He averaged about 30 a game. He's played well against everybody, though. Yeah, name a team he hasn't played well against. But Dave Johnson, this year, the flash in the past, perhaps, against Providence with the 18, but this year, he's been notching 20 almost every time out. Well, outside of that game, he had only scored 14 other points in four other games against Providence. So this is what happens when Murdoch's out of the game. Providence tends to look out of sequence offensively. They look for Murdoch so much, and right now they do seem to be confused with the ball. Here is Campbell. Johnson on him. Watts thought about that three, but Corker wouldn't let him have it as he jumped out on it. Watts. Blocked by McCorkle, who comes down on top of him, out of bounds, and the Friars will keep it. Friar fans, of course, wanted the foul call as McCorkle came tumbling down. Well, it's good defense by McCorkle. He gets all ball. They stumble over each other. Good no call. 7.45 remaining in the first half. Providence 34. Syracuse 26. Back in a minute. The Big East Dunk of the Week. Brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. Shots, obviously, by Dikembe Mutombo. 7.45 to play in the first half here. How are these two teams shooting early in the ball game? Well, we're going to check that out for you as soon as we get the opportunity. Providence, red hot, 62%. Syracuse, not bad, 48. Yeah, and Syracuse has been shooting the ball better because they're getting some shots now underneath the basket. Providence has had a number to the basket, although they have connected from three-point land, as you see, when they've had the chance. Murdoch has three of those four Providence three-pointers. Sadler decides to just shoot over Ellis and score. Well, Greg and Sadler have been very productive in this game, down low for Providence. The Providence pressure, some problems. McCorkle. Finding Ellis, Sadler went up 
up with him, and then they both went down, and Sadler will walk away with foul number two. He'll also limp away, perhaps turn the ankle. Nice feed by McCorkle right over the shoulder of Simpkins and Sadler. A lot of body contact, hammering Laurent Ellis, but again, Syracuse going with the advantage, trying to attack the goal. Autry has hit the lone Syracuse three-pointer. Sadler apparently is all right as he moves back to his position on the lane. And for Syracuse, Ellis along with McCray, Johnson, Owens, and Autry. Pretty big lineup right now. I'll say. Ellis short on the first of two. Murdoch is back in along with Forbes, Campbell, Simpkins, and Sadler. Well, Ron Ellis has really been playing consistent basketball for Syracuse of late. Coming up big with key baskets and defensive plays late in these close games for Syracuse. Simpkins to Sadler. They go inside, then outside. Forbes changed his shot a bit because of the big guys. It's a three-on-one. Here's Johnson and Owens. Oh, beautiful feed. Dave Hudson showing you another part of his game, and it was all orange jerseys that time out in front of Providence. 14 points in the ball game now for Billy Owens. The lead is down to seven, and Ellis comes up with a steal. Look at him handle it. Oh, what a Owens feed. reverses and scores. That's 16, and here comes Syracuse. Laron Ellis at 6'11", handling it and getting the great assist off the dribble. What had been an 11-point lead is down to five. Murdoch against Johnson starts in the lane. Throws it up, it won't go, and Ellis is there for a big rebound for the Orangemen. Tough shot that time by Murdoch. Good defense. Here's Owens. He thought about a little shake and bake and then backed away. Johnson will start toward the lane. He pulls back. Play stop. Owens is really being shoved. He fell from behind by Ford. Turned and swung an elbow. But Gene Monji quickly stepped in to cool things off. Now it's what you call a little preventive officiating. Forbes away from the ball. He's got the hold on Billy Owens right there. And that's where Owens reacts and the officials step in and say, hey, cooler heads will prevail, guys. And we're going to start calling some technicals. But I know what Billy reacted to. It was the grab of the jersey. And that's one way to get away from it. I'll say. That'll here's, do it. Here's Billy. Steps on the baseline. We're talking to Billy Owens today. He admitted that at times, Jim Bayheim works with him on this. He does get frustrated uh, when he gets double team, triple team. He gets hammered sometimes. Syracuse on an 8-2 run over the last three minutes. That's as much emotion, though, as you see out of Billy Owens on the court. Always seemingly very composed out there. Campbell fouled by Billy Owens. That is the first on the junior from Carlisle, who also said today that he has things he wants to accomplish in college basketball before he thinks about the pros. He wants his mark on this game. Sadler he took a shot to the knee. A little ice on the bench. He also wears the knee brace with the, the neoprene, the rubberized knee brace, which keeps the knee warm. He'll ice things down right now to just try to prevent anything, anything from puffing up on him. Here's Murdoch. Tried to go to Simpkins. It was deflected inside at the other end. It's Johnson. A great pass. He took his eye off of it just for a second. But Syracuse will get it back. Boy, Autry was pinpoint, wasn't he, with the baseball pass? Right on the money. Here comes McCray. Banging inside. And we'll go the other way. Number one on Conrad. He loves to dunk and loves to make things happen low. And he's very physical. Well, he was too physical that time. But he is an exciting one inside. Both teams not executing the last few times down the floor. It's been a game of runs in this first half. Simpkins checks out of the lineup. Turner is back on. A little pressure now by the orange bit. We've seen this at times from Syracuse. Here's Campbell against Ellis. He traveled before he got to Laurent Ellis. That's a good call. He, put, he never put the ball down and caught it on the wing. And difficult to get all the way to the goal without pounding it at least once from that distance. Well, he saw he had a little bit of a lane and he decided to go, and the two-point difference in the turnovers. At this stage of the game, we're nearing the five-minute mark. Pace is slowing down a bit more, so see who can execute better out of their half-court offense. Here's Owens against Campbell. Autry now. Up under the follow by Ellis. Won't go and stuffed by McCray. They'll wave it off. 
It was on the rim. No basket. Wow. Conrad McCray. We've been talking about him. Look at this move by Autry. Unbelievable under the basket job. And then that ball was still partially touching the rim. If it's on the rim or over the cylinder, you cannot touch it. McCray did. So wave that one off. It's still a five-point lead for the Friars. It's four three sets, 4.30 to play in the first half. Along with Ron Perry, I'm John Sanders. We're delighted to have you with us in Rhode Island tonight. Oh, Troy Brown really wanted the ball. He had position on Ellis. Forbes didn't give it to him. Turner takes it in, gives it back to Forbes for three. That's his second of the game. Grant Forbes from Massachusetts hits the three. He's a young player. He's getting more and more minutes. Able to hit the shot. He hit the first one to go. The confidence is there. Luke Johnson hanging. Draws the foul from Brown. He's able to keep his body in the air long enough, Ronnie. I don't think he was in good position to shoot, but he got the foul. Well, that's what he's been doing. He's strong. He's a great leaper. And you can draw fouls like that that other players won't when you've got that kind of hang time. Rick Barnes Club has hit five out of seven three-pointers. You know how they love the three. And yeah, they'll go to it. They'll go to it a lot, but tonight it's going down. Johnson, a little flat. He's made just one out of three at the line. Syracuse notoriously for Jim Beheim, not a good foul shooting team, although Jim Beheim strongly makes the point that they will make them when they need to. Dave Johnson's been a player this year, too, where he's had some play at first half and comes on like game but in the second frame. No kidding. We've got a break at the four-minute mark. It's 39-32, Providence retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited there are the numbers so far for Eric Murdoch 13 points he has made three three-pointers Providence leads by seven Syracuse has limited his shot opportunities though with some good denial defense in this first half it's right. the back door trying to go back door and it's stolen by Johnson eventually able to get it up off the court it was a good thought, just not good execution by the Friars. Autry has it stripped by Murdoch. Coming back the other way, a foul is called on McCray. Eric Murdoch got a piece of that ball as he went down the lane. Popped it loose. To go back to the other end because we are in the bonus both ways. Nine fouls on the Friars. Eight so far on Jim Beheim's club. Missed the front end, but Turner keeps it alive. Murdoch right at the foul line, rattles the jumper home. 15 for Eric. The lead is back to nine. It's been as many as 11. Syracuse had the early lead of three. We see thought back and forth a bit before the Friars put on a run. Strong rebound by Troy Brown. He can get up. Brent Forbes. Johnson takes it from him and Autry with Owens behind one too many passes. Uh, definitely Adrian Autry had the layup if he just went up and took it. Turner throws uh, it away. at both ends right now. McCorkle will check back in for Syracuse with 253 remaining in the first half. One of the problems when a game opens up the way this one has for the most part in the first half is to try to get things done quickly. Once in a while, it makes you not concentrate as a matter of hand, like catching the ball and really being in good position. And there were two perfect examples of that. You can see the backcourt scoring. Providence, good reason for that. Well, Murdoch, right to think of that number. He plays in the backcourt. That's all you need to know. Here comes Autry. Jumper over Forbes is short. Campbell the rebound. Providence has done an excellent job rebounding in this first half. One of the reasons why they are leading here. Blocked by Ellis, his second of the night. Turner gets another chance, and it's blocked oh, no. again by Ellis. LaRon comes up big twice. He just says, hey, get that stuff out of here. I'm going to send it right out of bounds. Good look up by Trent Forbes. Always keep your head up if you're a point guard. And LaRon Ellis with great timing. Block number one, and then another one. He was partially hidden there. Sends another one out. Murdoch almost threw it away. Forbes now. Two minutes, 10 seconds remaining first half. Providence with a nine-point lead. It's a 2-3 zone now by the Orangemen. Forbes can shoot it from the perimeter. Tucker can shoot from downtown, and so can Murdoch. 
Murdoch from downtown is a little short. Kip Fry won't go, and Ellis has the rebound. To Michael Edwards, who's back on the court. Turner should have grabbed that ball with two hands if he could have. Corkle, too strong with his shot. Ellis tries to track it down. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Fryer basketball with a minute 41 remaining in the first half. Mayheim might have a case. It looks like it might have gone out off the court. Laurent Ellis is in the neighborhood. Of course, Mayheim felt it didn't pull off of the Fryer, no question. Jim, as always, does not get a vote here. 41-32, Providence has the lead. Forbes against Edwards. Johnson picks up Murdoch. Here comes Deering. Nice. Two Top players three. in the air and almost rolls the basket in. Didn't get the foul, but Campbell gets the follow. Well, Murdoch once again drew a crowd. I thought there was body contact on the shot, but it gave his teammates a chance to rebound unattended. McCorkle for three. Simpkins a rebound. The lead is 11. Forbes with Murdoch on the right wing finds Campbell. Owens gets a piece of it and it goes anyway. Foul on Billy and counts the basket. Now give credit here to the floor game in the first half played by Trent Forbes. A great no-look pass. Campbell does the rest. The foul was it by Owens with the reach. Good fast break basket in the crowd. Is involved. The lead is grown to 13. Campbell tries to make it 14. His second miss owns the rebound. A 14 point difference. Excuse me, 13 point difference. He's trying to make it 14. Ellis misses the shot. Johnson misses the follow. Now Owens will go to the foul line. Campbell committed the foul his second. Billy Owens is a big first half once again. You notice with great players, you see the ball bounce in this first half to Murdoch on Providence's offensive end and to Owens on Syracuse. The great players just seem to have a nose for the ball. Even some of these lucky bounces end up there. Right? Switch that foul from Campbell to Turner. It is his second. Owens, four for four at the line, four rebounds and 16 points. His first miss. 16 quiet points, as we've mentioned. He's gotten it out of the tempo of this game, which has been an up-tempo first half. Billy telling us today the one thing he strives for as best he can is consistency. He doesn't want to get 31 night and 10 the next. Here's Campbell again. He's been very active coming down that left wing. Obviously, he likes that spot. Nice decision there by Campbell. I think he didn't have the big advantage, so Providence right now can work this thing down. Was there a one-second differential game clock, shot clock? Let's try to get it to Murdoch with about seven or eight seconds to go. So still plenty of time for that to happen. As the Friars look for the last shot and a chance to add to their lead, which right now stands at 12. The big thing you don't want to do is turn it over when you're going for the last shot like this, and they're going to try to set up Murdoch. Eric double-teamed in the corner. Forbes pushes it. Turner's going to have to shoot. At the gun, the end of the first half of play. Providence will head to the locker room with a 12-point lead. We invite you to stick around. We'll have another look at Eric Murdoch. First, this word from your local station. He leads the league in scoring, and he is 94 feet of trouble. George wanted to give to Priest a look for Bill Stone, and here's Murdoch. Back is Williams. Murdoch. Oh, what a move by Murdoch. Not sure what to do in the backcourt as the press is really bothering him. Oh, the steal by Murdoch. We got Derek Coleman. And Murdoch intercepts the pass intended for Douglas. Here's Murdoch penetrating. Shot to D. In three years, Eric Murdoch has made himself a solid reputation in the Big East as a defensive player. He already owns the Big East record for steals. The steal by Murdoch. What's new? And is likely to capture the all-time NCAA record. Coming into the 90-91 season, opponents expected the Providence guard to be tough defensively. What they were not prepared for was the way he entered his senior season running and gunning. Murdoch wants to clear out. He holds up for the over. jumper and he got it. Outlet pass to Murdoch. I'm so impressed. Providence looking for its first Big East victory. Murdoch for three, carries it. Murdoch 
Got it out. Uh, last year, I didn't have the year that I expected. You know, coming into last year, I was supposed to be one of the best guards coming into the Big East and one of the best guards coming into the country. And, um, you know, it just it didn't work out for me. I was, you know, I had a stress fracture and, you know, it seemed to slow me down. I was 190 pounds, you know, from missing all of the preseason. You know, I was just a little bit overweight. And, uh, you know, right after the season, you know, my stock, my stock went totally down. And, uh, you know, coming into this year, I felt I had a lot to prove. Um, you know, I knew I could play. I knew why I, I didn't have the season, you know, I expected. But uh, you know, I knew coming into this year that, you know, I was going to have to prove a lot of things to a lot of people. After setting four consecutive career highs in scoring early this season and joining the ranks of the top ten scorers in the country, Murdoch can no longer be categorized as just a defensive player. Although he uses defense to set up his offense, what does he like most about his game these days? I would like to say defense, but uh, it's, it's offense. You know, I like to score baskets. That's where you get notoriety from. And, you know, that's where if you score, you know, people are going to watch you. So, you know, I would like to say defense. I think Coach Barnes would be happy if I said defense, but it's offense. Plagued by injuries the last two years, Murdoch has raised the stakes his senior year. He leads a young Providence club, setting the example with his competitiveness. He says his drive to win comes from his youth and games with his cousins Dave and Lance Miller of Villanova. I think it started back when, you know, I was playing in Bridgewater and, you know, every every day it seemed like we used to go up against my cousins at home and, you know, you know, we hated losing, you know, if we was going to lose, that person was going to be mad for the rest of the week, it seemed like. Becoming the scoring leader brings a lot of media attention and its share of pressure, but Murdoch says he has ways to relax. You know, if I was at home, I would take off and go fishing or something. But since he's not at home, he finds other ways to unwind, like watching movies, listening to music, making some of his own. My name is Chris. And my name is E. We're here right now. In the place to be. We'll be coming back in a little while. Don't, Don't frown, get sad. sad. Just, Just smile. smile. This, this is a surprise to me. You know, I'm, this is the best basketball I've played, you know, in my life, so... You know, I think the key to that is just playing with confidence and, you know, knowing that, you know, people are looking towards you to make things happen. And his next point will break the record for points in a Big East game. They're going to run that little double screen for him. Baseline leans in with the right hand. And welcome to the record books once again, Eric Murdoch. We'll be checking Eric's numbers from the first half tonight. All the stats and highlights. Quickly in the game and sat the last nine minutes after he picked up his third personal foul. But he's one of those players that stepped up to the front in addition to Murdoch in this game. Murdoch, of course, very calm, confident, had the stroke going throughout the first half, nailing one of his three threes on that occasion. Syracuse does like to go inside when they get the chance. And Autry can do that as you see Owens sneak away from Bragg. Well, that's the alley-oop and Syracuse loves to go to it and Billy Owens, 17, very quiet first half points and as usual, he was all over the floor for Syracuse. Not as much help so far from Johnson as you would expect, but you mentioned the fact that he has shown he can come on in the second half. For the Friars, as always, it's Murdoch with a lot of help tonight from Bragg. There were four early ties in the ball game. Then Providence went on a 10-0 run. Murdoch ever closer to equaling the NCAA all-time steal record. And Syracuse closed to 36-31, but Providence outscoring them 9-2 in the final 6:45, and that brings us to halftime at 45-33. And right away, Providence comes out in an unforced error, which is one thing they did not do a lot of in the first half. We'll see if Syracuse can take advantage and get this thing under 10 points, which seems to be a barometer when you're trailing to try to get it down into single figures. Autry, Edwards, Johnson, Ellis, and Owens, the starters, the second half for Syracuse. Turner, knocked away inside, help with the left hand to lay it in is Adrian Autry. He does that so easily. Ronnie changes hands. Yeah, he does. And again, we've talked about his strength, his ability to go inside. Murdoch back door, and it was blocked by Autry. Bragg up for the follow. It rattles out. Billy Owens the rebound. Hands to Autry, then to Johnson. Against Trent Forbes. Tried to go inside to Ellis, and he couldn't come up with it. That was a difficult pass for Ellis to try to catch on the fly. A bullet look by Dave Johnson. We played the first minute of the second half. The only point.
points in the second half belonging to Syracuse. They closed to within 10, 45-35. Sadler, foul line, jumper good. Well, Sadler and Bragg now have combined for 20 points, and they're really the difference in this game because Murdoch has been consistent once again, but they have elevated the Friars into the lead in this one. Here comes Autry spinning in the lane, hanging, it rolls off. Johnson with one tip and into the hands of Sadler. Back comes Forbes. He's got Murdoch ahead on the left side. Bragg on the right. It winds up with Marquise. Turner's foul line jumper short. Murdoch had it. Lost it. Laying it in underneath is Tony Turner. That's his first basket of the game. And Providence continues to pound Syracuse on the offensive board. Very surprising. Biggest lead of the ball game. Now it's 14. Owen started to make a pass and then decided to shoot. He's got 19 points in the game. I think he lost control, but it turned out to be a great fake. Forbes jumper straight away. Owen's the rebound. He will push. Not too many 6'9 men in the country can handle the ball the way Billy Owens can. Turn around against Sadler. Won't go Forbes to rebound. 49-37. Bragg against Ellis. Tipped in by Sadler. Providence beating Syracuse down the floor right now. Again, Bragg with a great catch. And Sadler credit him with the hustle. He didn't assume the layup would go in. And Bayheim's argument here is that you called that offensive goaltending in the first half. Why not now? Sadler fouls Billy Owen. Yeah, we had Conrad McCray call for the offensive goaltender in the first half. And exactly what he said. That's the same thing as in the first half, Gene. What's the deal? Let's take a look. See if it gets off the cylinder. Very close. It was not resting on the rim. The question from that angle was, had it kicked away from the cylinder? Looked like it had, but it was very close. You know, one of the differences, of course, was McCray took it and jammed it in. Sadler simply tapped it in. Yeah. Good point. Much more emphasis when the ball gets rammed through. take another look you can make your own judgment the ball will just kick off the rim and then Sadler will tip it back home and again it looks like it just gets away there but again so difficult we've got two slow motion replays looking at it tough call and Beheim did not agree with the call 51 38 in the lineup to get the ball inside. Sadler's jump hook rattles home and he has hit three field goals quickly here in the second half. A dozen for Marvin Sadler. Sadler looks a little bit like Bragg did early in the game for Providence. 53-38. That's a 15-point difference. The biggest of the night. John Short. Owens had it. Lost it. Ellis comes up with it. He bends it over the front end. Nice hustle inside by LaRon Ellis. That's just hustle when you're on the offensive boards like that. And we played three and a half minutes of the second half. Sadler's made all three of his shots in the second half. And his last five is out of the gate fast in the second half. Dave Johnson with the size advantage playing Murdoch here to start the second half. Nice pass. Oh. Nicely that time by Trent Forbes. He has eight. Talk about hang time by Forbes. Edwards pressured by Forbes. He strips it away. It is kicked by Murdoch. He's fouled. It looked like Eric simply booted it along the court. Yeah, it really did. And if you do advance the ball like that, they'll call the kick. And it was a little bit of a hold off by Forbes. Accidental, they rule it. But how about Murdoch's ability to catch that ball and pick it up off the ground? Great athletic ability. 16.05 remaining in the game. Providence has its biggest lead of the night to be played in the game. Now both teams have gone at each other hard here, but it's Providence continuing to keep their lead up. Sadler's come up big to start this second half, and other players have as well, like Trent Forbes with that great body control in midair. Nice hoop. And Eric Murdoch will go to the line. He has not scored so far in the second half. The scoring slack has been certainly picked up by Sadler. Vicky Simpkins has come back into the lineup. Eric hits his third straight at the line. Not unlike the way Murdoch started the game off, though, with Bragg scoring, and then Murdoch does tend to score in bunches once he gets going, though. 17 points for Eric. 
the biggest lead of the ball game. Fries with some pressure, one, two, two. Just designed, really, that's the softer full court press to slow the orange men down. But Dave Johnson really needs to pick it up offensively. He had just four in the first half, and he could be explosive in the second. Edwards for two, it's short. Marquise Bragg to Watts. Now Burdock. He'll take it down the lane and give it up in the corner. Campbell too hard. Simpkins knocks it home. Well, I think if I had to point to one difference in this game, John, it's been Providence's ability to rebound at both ends. That's the differential. One of the keys to the game is pointed out by Rick Barnes. He said we have to do the job. Inside, we've got a foul. Simpkins was battling with Ellis. I think Dickey's probably going to pick up the foul call. Now, the big thing now for Syracuse is there's tons of time left in this game, better than 15 minutes, and their explosiveness is well documented. They just need to get it two at a time, and they've got to start boxing out and rebounding, of doing a better job to get back into this one. For Providence, they have to maintain their intensity. They've lost 10 in a row to Syracuse at home. You have to go back to the days when Dave Gavitt was a coach for the last victory. Johnson's first basket in the second half. That was back in the 75-76 season. And a long drought here at the Civic Center. I'll make it 74-75. You pointed out it's 16 seasons to go. 14-49 to play in the game. Of course, Dave Gavitt, we saw him. He's at the game here tonight. But now we talk to him more about Larry Bird, the Celtics. Right. The numbers favor Syracuse at three on two. Johnson spinning, hanging, hitting. Was that pretty? Now uh, we said he had to heat up, and he's got two quick ones. They need his offense. What a move that time. Marquise Bragg backs in, tries to step through, and he traveled in trying that move. He tried to squeeze between two players and couldn't. Autry back, Hopkins out for Syracuse. Conrad McRae is on the course as well, on the court as well, along with Johnson, Owen, and Ellis. Watts, Murdoch, Campbell, Bragg, and Simpkins. Finally rolling home. Dave Johnson taking over for this series of plays now for Syracuse, and he feels very comfortable to beat Watts each time down the floor. Keeps his streak alive. He's scored in double figures in every game as he hits 10. Simpkins against McRae. Takes him into the lane. Bragg steps up and has it blocked again by Ellis. That's four in the ball game for Laurent Ellis. Great projection. Johnson spinning on Murdoch. Gets him in the air, and Eric will pick up the foul. He thought he had a lot of ball, but when you sweep your arm that way, it's so difficult because the appearance is there for the foul. And if you combine some of the backup players, Bragg and Sadler have combined for 24 points. Owens and Johnson now have combined in the ballgame for 30 points. I think an interesting comparison there is you've got Owens with 20 and Murdoch with 17, but when you look at Johnson, he's just hit a few moves, but Johnson and Ellis together have 17, and Sadler and Bragg have 24. That's an interesting difference. 11 now for the junior from Morgan City, Louisiana. Billy Owens has his 20. Also said today that the most important thing is victory, not numbers. They don't mean anything. It's the bottom line, and that ball was off of Syracuse when it breaks the lane at the top of the backboard. It's clearly out of bounds. That was hit out off of Syracuse. 19 point lead is down to 12, with 13.41 to play. On the wing, Campbell up, misses the shot. Sadler the follow. Campbell has it along the baseline. Foul by Johnson. Syracuse showing full court pressure that time, and the aggressive nature of Providence in this game says, hey, pressure, we're going to go at it and attack it. And they've been successful. You go back to the Seton Hall game, and Jim Beheim used good defense, trapping defense, some pressure. Look at the difference in the second chance points, which has always been a key for Syracuse. They've always done well in that area. So he has been able at times this year to use his defense to wake up his offense. Well, that's often the case with a good offensive team, and both of these teams are good offensively, a lot of which is keyed off of the pressure defense. Campbell, one out of two. Ellis in front of Bragg, the rebound. 60-47, Providence. Owens hanging off the glass and good. Oh, pretty. Stopping on a dime. 
Long lead to Murdoch. He brings it back out. They will reset as the ball winds up in the hands of Trent Ford. That's a heads up move by Murdoch. If anyone could draw a foul, he probably could, but why give Ellis, who's got all that height advantage, a chance to reject one inside? So he reset the half court. They'll take full advantage of the time remaining, which right now is 23 seconds on the shot clock. 13 left in the game. Murdoch just throws it up from the lane, won't go. Sadler over the back for the foul. That's number four on Marvin Sadler. David Johnson is playing Murdoch about as tough as you can, even up right now. He's got some weight and some height on Eric Murdoch, about four inches, and about 15 to 20 pounds. I'd call it more like three inches, 6'5 to 6'2. Andre at the top of the circle, looks to his right and finds Owen. Billy spins, turns to the baseline, jumper off the edge of the glass. Tip loose, Campbell with Ford. Campbell gets it back and finishes. Trent Ford with some fine passing tonight. Another example of the great lead pass. Back again to a 13-point difference. They had worked it down to 11, had the Orangemen. And Providence is at their best when they're out in the open four. Johnson spins for his jumper and nails it. Boy, he's on fire. 13 points for Johnson. Nine of them here in the second half. David, second half, Johnson. He loves it. Well, he's been concerned at times about his slow start. Called the game against back in the dome where he scored all 19 of his points in the second half. Murdoch rattles the three and will not go, and the ball goes over to Syracuse. Murdoch, for the moment, has cooled off. A chance, maybe, for Syracuse to get back in it. They're down by 11 with 11.51 remaining. More after this word from the local Syracuse back into this ballgame. Well, he is. He was quiet in the first half, but now look at that bounce in his step. He's feeling it, and he's kissing home some tough shots off the glass, and he wants to go when he's got the ball. Another tough shot. He can jump up over the defense, hitting the baseline jumper, and he has come to life once again in this second half. Syracuse shooting better in the second half at 57%, and as you mentioned, Providence is two. Owen turns one way, then goes back to Andre. He'll shoot a three. It won't go. The foul is on Turner. He gets the pain and the foul. Three on Tony. Now, about midway through the second half, this is where Syracuse wants to bear down defensively to try to make a run and get this thing into a five or six point game. And Owen scores, and that's 24 for Billy. Now, it's becoming the Owens and Johnson show offensively for Syracuse. No As it has it. been all season. One or the other has been the leading scorer for his team in every game so far this year. Not a good one. Right into the hands of Ellis. Yeah, you just don't want to throw that one down there. A chance for Syracuse to move within seven. Momentum has certainly shifted here, and Billy Owens says Dave Johnson's taking a lot of pressure off you. What a block! And Jim Beheim jumping up and down along the sideline because it was trapped against the backboard. Troy Brown going up to pin this one. Yes, he, Billy Owens really shoots this ball without a lot of leap. He just lets it go, and that ball gets pinned. I think that's fine, John. That ball clearly had not reached its pinnacle on its way down. Good Dave block. Oh. Johnson again, count the basket. Dave Johnson, along with Owen, taking charge now. We started to say before, Billy Owen to say, hey, Dave Johnson has taken a lot of pressure off of me this year. Coming out and he goes from average of 60 games to 20. And also being a guy who wants the ball at front time. So he's taken a lot of pressure, pressure off of Billy Owens. And 11 of his points have come here in the second half as Syracuse starts to climb back. One of the things to keep in mind is the difference in team fouls. That's six so far on Providence. Only two in this half on Syracuse. Well, wow, that could be very interesting. And right now, Providence is having to operate out of the half-court set. They're much more effective when they can get the rebound or steal and get out front. Murdoch to Ford. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the game. It is a six-point ball game. What had been a 19-point lead for Providence has evaporated. Now, that's right. Syracuse so explosive. They've been patient, and the defense has picked up. Four won't go. Owens, the rebound, is batted away from behind, and they've got Turner, who strips the ball away from behind. 
so Turner picked up another foul, and that's four on him. He is the second Providence player with four personals. That'll be the bonus. Now, as you had pointed out, a lot of time to go in this game, and there should be a lot of free throws for Jimmy Beheim's club in the second half. There is the run in the last four-plus minutes, and we're going to find out if, as Coach Beheim says, this team can make the free throws when they need to. Sadler comes back. Turner checks out. Watson is also going to come back in. Well, it became gut check time for Syracuse down by 19 early in this second half. And Billy Owens and Dave Johnson say, hey, enough of this. Let's get the lead cut down. And Providence started to get somewhat careless offensively. And we're in a tight game again. And he misses the front end of that one and one. The foul will go on McCray and we'll go back the other way in terms of ball possession. That 19-point lead that Ronnie mentioned occurred at the 14-50 mark. We're now at the 10-16 mark. It's been a game of runs that generally as the game gets into its later stages and it's close to get more into a basket trading session. McCray bats it back into the hands of Murdoch. Murdoch was just two points in this second half coming from the line. Dave Johnson with his height advantage has really been tough on him. They're going to call Dave Johnson on the foul as he started down the lane. Johnson picks up number two. Hopkins has three. That's the most of any Syracuse player. We mentioned Sadler and Turner with four for the Friars. Four team fouls now on Syracuse. Here is Watt. He tried to trap him. He finds oh, it. Oh. In five and stuffs it. Clark for the basket in the second half. Marquise with the jam. He just cut that one off before Ellis could react. Johnson against Murdoch. Hang. Not a good one. Owen saves it on the other side. Oh, but that's a good one. 26 now for Billy. He never brought that ball down, did he? Kept it right up over his head. Again, as you pointed out earlier, right spot, right time. Ellis jumping out on Murdoch, and we are seeing Syracuse go to more traps. Murdoch takes it down the lane, lost control, now regains. He'll reset, Watt straight away for three. Now give Murdoch credit to stay with it. Watt, a patented three. McCray skips to Johnson. Had the three, decided not to take it. Ellis helps out. Owen, along that baseline, turn around, comes up short, follow won't go, and drag the rebound. Now, Jimmy Bayheim's got a big lineup out there right now with McCray, Ellis, and Owens on the front line. And, of course, Johnson playing in the backcourt. You can go down there and get some boards. So, Providence got it work cut out for it off the glass now. Well, that lineup's going to change because Michael Edwards is getting set to come back in. 67-58. The Friars have the lead with 8.24 to play. Murdoch trying to squeeze through a trap. The lead to Johnson. Watts trailing on the play. He lays it in. Oh, what an athletic move. 18 for Johnson, 14 in the second half. He went up like he was going to jam it, and then just kind of curled it in. Well, he felt the penetration. Felt the body contact. Said, I think I just put a little English on this one. Let it roll down. A little frustration on the face of the man with the ball, Eric Murdoch. Yeah, he tried to snipe his way through a trap. Thought he was tripped, but no call. There is a call on Ellis, number two on the run. That's not bad. He's in pretty good shape foul-wise. Well, that's right. And Jim Beheim does not have the deep gear, so clearly important for his frontline players to stay on the floor and out of foul trouble. Jim going basically with an eight-man rotation. They'll all rotate off to each bench. It is 67-60, the seven-point lead, and we're coming back after this. It was a big jam, and let Laurent Ellis know it. And of course, Laurent Ellis has had the better of a few exchanges inside tonight with the block. Sadler, with low underneath the sip gun, he shoots over Ellis. Good inside passing, interior variety in the up fake by the freshman Simpkins. The lead is nine. Syracuse has climbed back into the ballgame, getting as close to six after being down 19. Friars with the soft pressure, but they're playing man-to-man -man defense. Here's Johnson, right at the foul line. Simpkins on him now to try to take the shot away. Great penetration by Adrian Autry. Nine points in the game for the freshman from the Bronx. 
A lot of watching, though, defensively by the Friars. Where's the help out when the guard penetrates like that? Did not happen. We're counting down to seven minutes remaining in the game. Murdoch with just three shot attempts in this second half. He's been denied for the most part. They're trying to isolate the inside game. Ellis oh. rejects another. That's five blocks for him. It's a tandem of Owens oh. and Johnson. Ellis tried to follow. Couldn't. Simpkins now looks to Murdoch. One on two. That won't bother Eric. It's fouled by Edwards. That's pretty good foul by Michael Edwards. I believe it was on the floor. But Syracuse has not reached the bonus yet. We're in Providence at the Civic Center. An early 10-0 run put the Friars on top, and you can see what has happened in the ball game. Owens and Johnson taken over the offense for Syracuse, but for Providence, one of the big keys has been the rebound edge. That's been the number for them tonight, and they have done a great job off the glass. And Owens and Johnson once again taking charge. Murdoch, they ruled, was into the act of shooting, so he does get himself to the line. He's so strong. He's made them all tonight. He has five out of five. 18 in the game. He's made a field goal here in the second half. That's his first. We mentioned Ellis with his five blocks. Five of the seven Syracuse blocks that we showed you in our reset of the game. Ellis pops out to take it. Edwards will try three. He's got it. Yeah, right on the basket body. for Michael Edwards. His first of the game. Back to that five-point difference now. That's as close as Syracuse has been in the second half. Simpkins will jump it up. Matt Hill. So important for Simpkins to do that. If his player backs off of him, he's got to at least step in there and penetrate, make the defensive player be honest. That's a bonus, but he can nail the J. And Ellis will limp off as McCray comes back on. So a bit of a problem for Laurent Ellis. Conrad McCray is back. Simpkins has made all three of his field goal attempts here in the second half. Well, if you're a Syracuse fan, you got to hope that Ellis just twisted that ankle and that he can get that wrapped up a bit tighter and get back out there. Take a long drop for Syracuse if they can have Autry and Edwards continue to provide some offensive spark. Autry oh, oh. banged away. Murdoch on the left wing nice for pass. Forbes. Beautiful feed once again by Trent Forbes. He's done a nice job in the open floor tonight. The lead goes back to nine. Owens oh, finds McCray, stripped by Forbes, and Johnson saves it off his foot. Here comes Murdoch. Two on nice one. pass again. Oh, what a block by McCray. Got a pace. The Simpkins finishes. Oh. Well, John, this is Providence's game, the transition. And it looks like Jim Behan is going to say, hey, we got to slow him down. It's fast break time. A game of runs, the latest run going against Syracuse. Back. Finance and the Big East soft and dry female scholar athlete from Syracuse. Lisa Box, she's a member of the Orange swimming team. She's the captain of that team and also an honors student in psychology. And our salute to both of them. And a salute to the Friars who've made another run in the last minute. They've scored the last six points in the game after Syracuse had moved in on them, moved to within five. Now that's right. And Rick Barnes' troops really bore down now defensively and they got out and ran. When they've been in the half court set, they've had trouble scoring. And right now, with a little over five to go, John, it's time for Syracuse to make a final run and get this thing closer to evened up, trying to get into the final stages of the game. And Laron Ellis is ready to check back in. Apparently, he's all right. Johnson for three, short. McCray stops. Oh, he can light him up. Dickie Simpkins is way out on Johnson now, matching up against him always with the... Oh, Ray with the big oh my, look at that. Johnson up, rolls it in. Dave hits the 20 mark. Two quick baskets for Syracuse, back they come. Using their defense again, another steal. Owens, foul line, jumper, won't go. Simpkins has the rebound. He's triple teamed in backcourt and finds Forge. Now Murdoch, he'll take it into the lane. Pull up for the jumper, rolls it in. Well, whatever. Providence needs a big one. Get it to number 14, Murdoch. He'll get it for them, but a furious run now by Syracuse. Murdoch with the foul, number three. Well, with two explosive teams as we have tonight, this one won't be over until literally the buzzer sounds because points get made up so quickly in this one. Ellis back, McCray out. No question about offensive goaltending on that one as he took the ball under the basket but simply went back in and stuffed in the follow. Marquise Bragg is in. Dickie Simpkins is out. 
The Friars and the Orangemen, 4.30 remaining. It's 78-69. Providence leading by nine. Johnson tries to cut into that. Misses. Had it, lost it to Murdoch. So a big miss on the front end. Here comes the trap, almost stripped away. Michael Edwards will pick up his fourth foul. Outside finds Owen against Campbell. Jumper, baseline good. 28 now for Billy Owen. Well, this is his time and it's Murdoch's time. We've got two great ones. And they'll be the key guys down the stretch for their respective team. Here comes Campbell, stumbles and commits the offensive foul. I think partially, Ronnie, he was out of control because he stumbled on the way into the lane. Yeah, he lost his footing. But I thought he got the ball too quickly that time with Syracuse's defense having recovered. And that's where you want to get out and run the offense when you're up by eight this late in the game. Syracuse has handled the press very well. Johnson. Oh, pretty. Followed by McCray misses. Loose underneath and into the hands of Sadler. He has it stripped away. Providence will keep it. Johnson very upset because he made a great, great move and didn't get the roll on the shot. Vicky Crowley's going to step in right now and indicate probably that there's no movement down there for Sadler. Sadler finds Bragg. He's trapped. McCray will pick up the foul. Well, the one positive for Syracuse is, is the officials have allowed some pretty aggressive trapping in this game, which is what Syracuse needs now to create the steal turnovers and convert them into who? Number four on McCray. Of course, Bragg struggles from the foul line. He's been shooting in the 40s this year from the line. 40% range, that is. They both teams pretty much oh. on target, number-wise, for what they have done during the course of the season leading up to this game. Bragg with 15 points is high game. He's 21 earlier this year. Good, good touch on both of those foul shots. And as we say, inside four minutes, they're all important now. 335 remaining in the game. Autry handles the pressure, finds Johnson. McCray, no place to go inside. Skip it to Ellis. Now Autry, penetration, hang. Short with a jumper, tipped up, won't go. A couple of Syracuse players got their hands on the ball, but the foul had been called as they went up in a bunch. The foul is on Fred Campbell. Oh, it was on Bragg, I'm sorry. The Red Autry with the open jumper, he likes to take it almost into people and then jump up over them. For over time, we'll just nail the open one, but Syracuse banging the board, but Trouble from the line now. Absolutely trouble from the line. Johnson was 16 points in the second half, but he has made only four out of nine at the line. And it's five already. Been a pretty good foul shooter this year, too. Just under 70%. Missed them both. Ellis got a piece of it, and Campbell tracks it down. Syracuse comes up with a turnover. They've got the numbers, and Owens will go to the baseline. Oh, 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 oh. 30 now for Billy Owens. Take charge time. Providence has got to get the ball to Murdoch a lot. They've got to be better with it. Sadler. Good job by Forbes to back it out. Unless Less than three minutes remaining in the game. Unless the real easy one is there in the break. You want to work the clock, but 
nevertheless remain aggressive with the basketball. The lead is nine, and Owens will pick up the foul as he tried to sweep the ball away from behind and could not. That's three on Billy. Now, if he's behind, okay, they're going to call that a, a reach-in foul. Billy having a conversation with the junior college transfer, Brett Campbell. Michael Edwards back in, McCray out. We'll see as Jim Beheim decides to go offense, defense with his substitution pattern here in the final 247. Now well, he'll be getting McCray in there for the defensive session. Ellis down with the rebound as Campbell has missed. Four out of five from the line tonight. Now the next one will be all two shot fouls for everybody, but that was a big miss. Johnson for three. Air ball. That will delight the faithful. All 13,000 plus here. Bragg lays it home. Heads up by Ford once again, and he's just got a lot of assists tonight. A three for oh, Owens. Oh, he's been clutch. 33 in the game for Billy. Don't count out a team with Billy Owens out there. 83-76 the score. Forbes triple teams as they chase him and Johnson makes the foul. Three on Dave. 2.06 to play. A seven point lead for the Friars who must make their foul shots now, Ronnie. Yeah, they are really critical down the stretch. He's got to make them throughout the game. I'm sure Rick Barnes will want Murdoch to handle it as much as possible because he's a tremendous foul shooter. And it really comes down to Murdoch, his presence for Providence, and Billy Owens can he continue to make those threes and tough hoops for the to get back in. Trent into double figures with 10. Again, getting one out of two. That's his average for the year. At the two-minute mark, the lead is eight. Owens tries another three. Ellis saves it. Owens comes up with it back down on the baseline. Ellis lays it in. A big, big basket by Laron. He's got nine. The lead is six. Here comes the Syracuse pressure. Campbell. They ought to get it to Murdoch, and they found Campbell. But unlike the pass, in games where there were a lot of reach-ins late, which were one or one fouls, both teams have now reached the 10 foul limit. That does take a lot of pressure to know when you go to the line, you've got two chances. It takes a lot of pressure off the first one. Edwards' fourth foul, and Campbell had Murdoch open on the far wing, Ronnie, and either didn't see him or decided not to make the pass. Well, I really think you get it to him as much as possible, but Campbell smooth with the first one. Providence with all three timeouts left. The Orange men with just one. I'm sure if they can score here, they'll go to that timeout, try to regroup and put the press on. Here comes Osprey. Floating down. Yeah. Bragg comes up with a rebound. Somebody took a blow to the head and went down. That was Osprey. That was a fine penetration by Red Osprey. He just couldn't get it to go. Tried to recover. The foul is on Billy Owens. Strong penetration here, and he knifes by everybody, just doesn't get enough on it. And there's the reach-in foul, and he ends up getting nailed. Looks like an elbow by Bragg to the side of the head. But he stays in the ball game, and if this score holds up, St. John's will be alone at the top. Only team with two losses, conference play. It's quietly been very, very good this year. The play of Malik Steely, outstanding. Misses his first miss tonight. A big game on Tuesday at home as Seton Hall comes into play Providence. And of course, Seton Hall winning earlier today. Another big game for Syracuse on Monday. They will be at UConn. Tipped all the way back to four. A big break for the Friars. They can sense it now. Murdoch has it, and there's not much else he can do except put him on the line. Bayheim staring at his third defeat of the season, all in Big East play. And after losing at home to Pitt, and certainly the Panthers seem to have the Friars' number, at least this year, 
the Friars have bounced back with a strong performance. It was that early half run gave them the lead, and they've been able to hang on. Aldock well, has 22 points as he steps up. They go up by 19, and then there was a big run over the like the 14 to 10 minute mark by Syracuse, but they haven't quite been able to get over the hump against Providence, where Providence built up such a big margin. Well, as you know, Ronnie, when you get that far behind, you get back to within five, as they did, it's really tough to keep it on going. You've worked so hard to get back to that point, you just can't finish it. Eric Murdoch with three steals tonight. For to tie the all-time NCAA career steal record. Autry for three. Bragg a rebound. See him kiss that one off the glass on the way down? Get rid of it, Marvin, to Campbell. That will just about ice it. 89-78, and we're nearing the final minute of the game. Johnson won't go. Bragg again the rebound. And the Friars can feel it now. Well, Bragg has been huge in this game. We felt a couple of people had a rise to the occasion with Murdoch, and along with Sadler, Marquise Bragg has been the man. Syracuse did lose a game in this building in 1980. A record crowd for tonight's game. That is capacity, and what they are going to see is 16 seasons of frustration. Ten straight losses here at the Civic Center come to an end tonight. If you go back Maybe. to 1980, it was yes. a Big East tournament game, and Syracuse did lose that ball game, but it was not to Providence. Well, you've got to give a lot of credit, too, to Syracuse. They've had these incredible runs against Providence, against Seton Hall, so... They come into a gym like this tonight, and everyone's fired up for the upset in Providence. There's Dave Gavin up in the stand, sitting next to Commissioner of Officials, Art Highland. Ellis, the rebound. 90-78. Ronnie, you said it could get into the 90s, and it's just going to edge into the 90s. Eric Murdoch with a rebound. Well, Syracuse just had to play near-perfect basketball as... Friars turn it over, but they had to play near perfect basketball when you fall down by nine in the second half of the game to get back into it. They made, they made a couple of good runs, but they haven't been able to quite get over the hurdle to get all the way back into it. Johnson has had the big second half as he nails point number 22, 18 of them here in the second half. The lead is 10 with 30 seconds to play. Campbell, very active, followed by Bragg. 22 points for Marquise, a new career high. Well, that's, the, that's really the story of this one. And Providence jumping out quickly and rebounding with the Orange men. Autry now has 11 points for just 15 seconds, standing between the end of 16 years of losing to Syracuse here at the Civic Center. The date of that last game was December 14, 1974. That was the last time PC defeated Syracuse, but they will celebrate in Rhode Island tonight. Well, that shows you how much this means to the Providence faithful to win this game, and a lot of credit to Syracuse and the great team they are that someone would react this way to a win against them. Congratulations to Rick Barnes and the Friars. We'll be back to wrap it up after this.